Okay guys, so I'm going to take you through the hinge today and we're going to talk through some main technique points and also some common errors that we see in the gym day to day um, to hopefully help you get hinging better. The reason why hinging properly is important is because you're probably doing it in day to day life whether you're moving house, lifting big boxes, bending down, playing with your kids, picking them up. Um, a lot of the time people do this wrong and they actually lift a lot for their back as opposed to hinging correctly and using the lower body. So hopefully by the end of the day, you're gonna be hinging better and remain injury free. So the hinge can be overlooked quite a lot in gym environments because people wanna do more exciting things than a bodyweight hinge, but mastering this foundational movement pattern is gonna carry over really nicely into other areas of your training and it's gonna help set you up for success with your lifts long term. It's quite common for people to hinge wrong in uh, movements like a deadlift, where instead of using their lower body and driving the floor away, they round a lot and use their upper back. And for a long time, people can get away with this. They can probably pull some pretty nice numbers, but sooner or later, it does catch up with them. And that's when we run into pretty nasty reoccurring injuries. Okay guys, so we're gonna set up with our feet, hip width apart, slightly soften our knees, find that pelvis and rib cage position. And then from there, we're gonna send our butt to the back of the room moving through our hips. And you wanna go, you wanna send your butt as far back as when you start to feel a good stretch in your hamstrings. Now, it's important to note that depending on your mobility, you might be able to send your butt further to the back of the room than me, or you might not be able to get it as far back. You might just be doing a slight wee hinge, and we're gonna cover some common, area, uh, common errors that we see and some ways to improve your hinge and level it up. One of the common errors that we see with the hinge is people trying to send their butt as far back as possible and what they actually end up doing in order to do that is they start to round for their back and lose that position. Uh, it puts a lot of pressure on their back, which we're not trying to target when we're hinging. So a way to work around that is grabbing a broomstick, placing it down your spine okay we're looking for three points of contact here one at my head one in between my shoulder blades and then one around my bum so from there we'll remember the same cues from before slightly soften the knees send the hips back and we're looking to maintain those three points of contact throughout the movement and what you'll see here if you are someone who rounds for their back is you'll see you start to get your hips back to a certain point and then in order to get more range you start to round and lose those three points of contact. See, now I've only got one point of contact between my shoulder blades. So grabbing a broomstick in the gym or at home is a really good way to self-diagnose if you round your back and how to work on it. So another way that people will go wrong with their hinges is they'll start to move for their lower back, okay? And what that will look like is same set of position, but in order to send their butt as far back as possible, they start to really arch through their lower back. And what that does in the hinge is it starts to load your lower back, which is not what we're trying to target. We're trying to target our hamstrings and glutes. So how that will happen is they'll lose their rib cage and pelvis position and really start to arch through the lower back. So a nice way to combat this is using a wall for some feedback. So you will actually come and stand pretty close to the wall. Same set of position. And then from there, thinking about that pelvis and ribcage position, setting your core, and then moving for your hips and touching the wall with your bum. So you'll see now, I'm not getting much range, but I am hinging correctly. From there, you can just continue to take small little steps away from the wall and continue to touch it and tease out that range of motion. So that's how we avoid arching our lower back for the hinge. So the last error we see a lot of the time when people first learn how to hinge is they get up into a good set of position, they begin to hinge, but then they continue to squat and bend the knees to send those hips back. And we're trying to avoid that. We want to be able to send our butts to the back room solely moving for our hips in the hinge. So like we use the wall, for um, avoiding to bring our lower back into the hinge and gain better a range of motion in the movement. We're gonna use the bench 
in order to avoid that squatting pattern at our knees. So you'll set up for the hinge, you'll put your knees up against the bench, and then we're keeping our knees nice and soft. We're not continuing to squat. Keeping them pressed up against the bench and then sitting back for our hips. Most importantly, we're not putting loads of pressure into the bench of our knees. We're just using it as a bit of feedback to keep those knees soft and keep them in position throughout the hinge. So from there, a nice progression can be adding a band in to give us more feedback and resistance during the hinge. So you're gonna grab the hip, uh, band underneath your feet, slightly soften the knees, okay? Pull the band up towards you, set your shoulder blades, and then hinge and drive the floor away. So getting comfortable using the band can be really good because it helps transition us into bigger hinge movements such as the deadlift where the emphasis is driving the floor away as opposed to sort of rounding and lifting through our backs. Okay guys, so the next progression from there would be an elevated kettlebell hinge. So the reason this is harder than the band is because the greatest resistance of the band is when we're at the top of the movement, whereas the kettlebell is gonna challenge you throughout the movement. So same setup as always, soften the knees, look to grab the kettlebell, Shoulders back, and then we're hinging up, driving the floor away. Sending our hips back to get it back to that starting position. Okay guys, hopefully some of those drills and seeing the hinge from the ground up has been helpful for you to self-assess your own hinge and see where you can maybe move a bit more effectively. Remember to subscribe, like, share the video with a friend who can't hinge properly and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in a video soon.